Welcome to JG's Fight Talk, and with me now I've got Francis Cruz. How you doing, Francis? Thanks, I'm good, Joe. How are you, mate? Honestly, mate, you look dressed up, ready to go out. It looks for like me. I've completely interrupted you going out. No, thanks for having me, honestly. I appreciate it. No, no problem at all, mate. As I say, it's, um, yeah, Fight Talk for a reason. Absolutely love it. Any boxer that comes on here, full respect. And, um, yeah, and... And what you've done in a sport, a lot of people turn around, they say, oh, you know, journeyman this and doing that and all the rest of it. And I just think hats off to you, mate. Do you know what it is, mate? People misunderstanding where journeyman do you know what I mean? Especially the casual fans, they just think journeyman, oh, he's going to be shit. It doesn't mean that a journeyman, like, you could class um, James the Gale as a journeyman. He, what, he won all his fights on the road, do you know what I mean? He's yeah. a road warrior. It's just another word for a road a road fighter, really. Someone's fighting in the way corner constantly. It was not arguably up against it. Obviously, yeah. journeyman, like me, yeah. journeyman like me, I did a lot against him where James Gale, his team and everything, it was a bit more 50 50 in this way, but he's still winning against it. Like, So you class, could you call James Gale, do you know what I mean? It's helped. Yeah, it's helped uh, yeah, not into the way, journeyman. For example, Sam Eggington. A lot of people. You know, well, he was meant to be a gentleman, wasn't he? He turned pro. He was just meant to be a gentleman, wasn't he? But he's just too, uh, he's just too rough and too much for like most of me. So he, he yeah. what he lacks technically, he makes up physically, doesn't he? Mentally, do you know what I mean? He's not he's out of the fight. Guy, he's a nightmare. He's a general nightmare. He's anyone's hard night's work, and he doesn't matter who you are. He's giving you an hard night work unless you put him to sleep, which you can do that because he takes his shot to his face, doesn't he? Like he doesn't have a defense. I feel I, I, I do uh, worry about him a bit when he retires. Because the amount of shots he's took to his face, like every fight of war, it's an absolute yeah. dog fight in it. Every one he's in, even the Same ones that he wins. Ed Cheeseman, another one, fights with his chin out. It, it's... It, it must be in, he must be in contender for fight of the air every time he has a fight. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, he's that type of fight. He's, he's brilliant, a war's brilliant for the fans, but he's like he's long term health. He needs to learn how to move his head a bit more. He, but he what way from where from, doesn't it? He? He's got to a really right. high level, he's got Everyone's to see the high level. Everyone's got their own way of doing it. I'll tell you, it's, well, before we start, big shout out to Anthony Fowler, who's um, retired. He's retired, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, hats off to him. Made the right decision for his family oh, yeah. and for business. And good luck to him. Wish him all the best. Well, well Fowler had a great career in the amateurs, mate. He had a good career in the pros. He won a British title, what? didn't he? Did he have the, He never won the European, did he? He had the British, wasn't he? Yeah. I think he had a British title, mate. He fought some big names. Liam Smith. He, he fought... Um, who else did he box, Fowler? He's boxing big, he has boxing decent good names, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's been in Scott with some real Scott Fitzgerald was a good fight. He boxed him. Yeah, that was a good fight, that. I think it would have been a good fight. Fowler against Cheeseman there. Never got on, did I? Cock, could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, that would have been a, that would have been a, I had a fancy Fowler to bang him out, like, to be honest, yeah. But Fowler, know, he can... The thing is, when Ted's back's to the wall, he he's, seemed he, to just turn up, didn't he? But, but yeah, everyone, everyone, Fowler, uh, he, can, uh, he can retire happy, can't he? In proud, it's as simple as that. Um, Scott, and, yeah, Scott Fitzgerald, um, Harry Scarf, um, George Forteo, wasn't it? Uh, Scarf's Rico a good Mueller, fighter, bro. Liam Smith, he's he's been with some tough lads, but I, I, do you know what? Hats off to him, do the right he, decision by yourself. And, and he's retired, mate. He's retired with money. Do you know what I mean? Not how many fights consider yeah. that. He's retired yeah, exactly. with health and money, and he's got. He's like you can all say he's expert champion. How many fights can turn? No, I'll say that when they retire. I can't. Do you know what I mean? So you can retire happy. Do you know what though? We're here to talk about you. Like I said before, it's all about you for this one. And I know I guess you're I not one. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, one of those guys that you can ask me anything you want. I'm just... Talk boxing all night and talk about all the other fighters he loves. But we're here about you, Francis. You've had a great amateur and pro career. You've fought whoever's come in front of you. You've never turned away a fight. You've always worked hard. And I think there's no denying that, to be honest. But where did it all begin for you, Francis? Well, I was born premature one there with epilepsy. And asthma. I have asthma. Um, I had growth problems and stuff like that. I also had an eating disorder when I was young. So the doctor told my mum I was, I'd never be able to do a contact part of my life. And that, 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 like, I didn't like that. Do you know what I mean? I didn't like people... Tell me what type of life I can have, can and can have. I couldn't do like I couldn't watch TV for longer than two hours as a kid because of my epilepsy. It was like it was bad. So I use that as motivation, not as start boxing. And um, the amateurs, it wasn't. I enjoyed the amateurs because I love boxing, but 
it's the head guards and I didn't like it. Me, it wasn't my the pros was for me. That was when I when I turned pro. I thought right, this is my career starting now. I can actually have a go. But I wanted to get. I wanted um. So I've got an old school mentality. Me, I want to be if I'm the if I'm comes off a world champion. I want to be say on a world champion because I beat like every single body in my weight. It was meant to be the best. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm a world champion because I've sold those tickets. I'm a world champion because I beat everyone out there. No one can say they're better than me. That was my mentality. So I wanted to get to the top the quickest way possible, and which for me, which was taking hard fights on the road. So when I got off on the debut in Russia, um, six threes on the Euro sport, that was, I took it with an happy, but maybe that was a bit too green to take after, you know what I mean? Because when I got over there, it was, a, it was a massive, like, it was a big occasion. When we were walking at the ring, all the fans were like were screaming Russia. Like it was, re- it was intimidating me, especially if you hadn't got to the pro before. And I think what I just it, 2008, 2008, 2008. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I just froze a bit on the night, mate. Do you know what I mean? When I got back home, I kicked myself, like I probably kicked myself because I thought that, that was a massive opportunity gone there. Because if I won that fight, Frank Maloney was going to sign me up. Me and Chris Riley, because we both went over there. We won that night. We had a deal with Frank Maloney to sign us up. And obviously, you already got the draw. I got beat. Um, then I thought, after that, I thought, I, I took it, like, I looked at it a bit stupid because I thought, so I've, got, I've already got to defeat my record now. I might just keep carry on keeping hard, like, taking hard fights. And I think my second fight back was Kieran Fowl, I think, in Bolton. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, when, I remember when I boxed him, right? That, I didn't know much of him, no, when I got there because I didn't, I used to get told who was fighting. I used to, didn't used to do any research on him, mate. Like I used to, if I knew over the way, I knew over the way. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize he was a top England amateur and stuff. <laughs> yeah, you, I you made, I, yeah, I, just thought, yeah right? I, didn't, I didn't know <laughs> fucking Kieran Fisher Sparrow and all that. <laughs> um, but every single person was in there, you know, for him that I was on about. It was a because t- 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 was boxing off the show, uh, Stewie Oregon, Terry Flanagan. He boxed right. in and he was on before, he was on before me. I was thinking, why am I on so late? I'm on, I'm doing four threes against a kid. And it's like I was doing my set of pro fight. And I realized, mate, when after I did my ring walk, when he did his, I thought Ricky Atman was coming out. The full stage and went absolute wild. And I mean it went wild for him. He had a lot of fans in him, good passionate fans. So no offense, but, you've gone from Russia, probably the most intimidating place on the planet, to box in Manchester to, to a crowd that it's totally yeah. over Honestly, his mate, you have no idea who he is. <laughs> I didn't, not until he, like, when I'd, I sat sitting on the later with the shows going on when I was seeing, like, like Terry Flanagan that on before me. But when he did his drink walk, I'm not even joking, I thought Ricky Atten was fighting. The place went absolute wild. And he come out of Blue Moon, so, because he was Ricky Atten's biggest fan, wasn't he? Um, and I thought, I set myself in that corner there when I was no waiting for him to cut, like, do his walk. I kept facing my course. I didn't like face the fans. I thought I'm not gonna because I knew I learned from Russia. I said I'm not letting this like bother me. So I kept facing the corner. I thought myself, I'm gonna have to do something with him in the first minute here. Otherwise, he's gonna just try and bully me for the full fight. So he come. I remember him come flying out. He used to, he had a big work rate, didn't he? He come flying out, and I remember I, I grabbed. I, I remember I clinched him and I picked him up and I flung him on the floor. And I seen like the shocking on his face, and I thought that was just my way of basically saying like I'm here for fight. It was a good fight, before, but he beat me. Yeah, I yeah. Think it, went, it went to points, really. It was four rounds. Yeah, it points. Yeah, it was a good fight. I wanted. I did want the rematch. Like I said, my thoughts when I got out of the fight, I'd have that rematch straight away with more notice. Do you know what I mean? Because it was a good fight. I enjoyed it, mate. Like Kieran was one of the few opponents who I boxed who was willing to stand and fight with me. Do like, more... a nice guy as well, Kieran. He's, oh, he's a top man, mate. Now, he? he's, doing he's, well. he's, he's absolutely killing it. He's smashing it, promoting, managing, and uh, coaching. And when yeah. he's, he's, he always puts his videos on Facebook, and all his uh, video clips of him coaching, he looks like a top coach, to be honest. He actually does look like a real good coach, mate. But yeah, he's doing well. He, he was a good fight, King Fell. He did went far. Then you went on, because you absolutely smashed it in 2009. I'm not going to lie. You then went. That that was in March. Then in April you went against Usman Ahmed. Then in May you went against um, Kevin Coglan. In the same month, at the end of the month, Paul Edwards. Then the next month, James Mulhern. And then <laughs> November, uh, Benjamin. Is it? Hello, in Switzerland. Yeah, in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. And then, right at the end of the year, in December, Lewis Browning. So you think you debuted? In October 2008, and then you went on to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fights 
the following year. And do you it know just what? Shows I mean? how tough you are, Francis. I'm not going to lie. And, to be honest with you, though, I thought I won at least four or five of them fights. You know, the, the ones you just named there, I beat Moe and definitely beat him. And when I boxed him right, Chris Riley boxed on the same night in Liverpool Olympia. Uh, also, we we uh, were the same quarter, so I was sat watching Riley box against this kid called Troy, who was on the primary Griggan at the time. Um, Riley got beat, then as soon as he got out the ring, we had to get dressed and we had to go from there in was that Manchester something to box Mohan and Wolves, so we had to drive straight to Wolves, mate. I didn't have time to warm up for a fight. As soon as I got there to, to fight Mohan, they basically sent me, you have to get your gear on getting the ring because it was that like that's how much we're in a roof for it. <laughs> And I found him and I'm and I battered him for four rounds. I fucking I buried him. He had he had a big slice over both his eyes. I had people messaging me the next day on Facebook saying, I don't know how you never got that decision last night. Like there's one of them I thought I definitely know of one. Um Lewis Brown had beat me. He's probably for me, he's the biggest punch in our box out of everyone. Oh really? Like, yeah, I know like Butler not all of them have got better knockout records. But when I uh Lewis Brown hit me in the first round, I seen stars straight away. Like I seen stars, I thought myself because he was a big mate. When I when we, me and Lewis Brown got weighed in for the fight, right, I thought that can't be my opponent. He goes, Look at these fives of a massive light three trunks. I thought he can't be the lad I'm fighting. And it could come out, it was. And he it was a right hand in the first round. I seen stars straight away. I thought, I'm going to get, I set myself, it was six threes, I think it was. I set myself, I'm going to have to get myself as close as I can to him for the rest of this fight to yeah. basically to manipulate his power. And also, it, it'll make him believe that no matter what he's hitting me with, you know, it's not hurting me, do you know what I mean? So it meant that you beat him during the oh, fight. I bet deep down, I bet deep down you were thinking, I'm going to have these hurts. Oh, <laughs> mate, first time, you, only, I seen stars, I thought, I hope he knocks me out, so only if I have to keep going this six, six rounds. <laughs> no, he hit hard, Lewis Brown, he did. Um, yeah, so I, was, I was got, got as close as I can to him as for the rest of the fight, and we just basically could have put a... a Cloth overs for that fight, but me being that close and also minimizes him being able to load up the shots, which they don't realize at the time. So even though he's still in your yard and not his like knockout punches where you would have if you had a bit of space at the time in between. So that's yeah. how I managed to get through fight. But he did deserve to beat me, Brown. And I beat Hoglan. I don't know how he got that. That was a joke. Um, I, I beat Osman Abbott twice for me. I believe I beat him both times. Who else was on that list there? Paula does. He beat me, like, to be fair. Yeah, you you finished you finished the, the year with Lewis Browning, then the next year I think you had you had pretty much about six seven months off before you went against Tassif Khan, and then um, you rammed in. I don't know how you did it. So your first fight of two thousand and ten was in July against Tassif Khan. Then in November you went against um, Yanku Yenev where you won by TK in the first round. Then November 27th, uh, Kevin Satchel. Then 4th of December, you went against Chris Edwards. And then the 15th of December, Jamie Conlon. So it's it's almost like you got to the end of 2009 and thought, I'm going to have a bit of a break. You had, had a bit of time out, and then bang, you, you shoved all your fights in about three months. That's true, isn't it? When they, when they had that break, I was going through a lot of problems, like, to me, like outside of my life. Um, I split up, I split up with my twins, mum. Like, because when I, I've suffered from depression like all my life, so when I go through stuff like that, it takes me a few months. To, I just go yeah. completely off the game. I don't see the gym. I don't do nothing. Then when I come back, it's like. Bang, I'm back at it for like yeah, yeah, yeah. full time. Um, so I, I split up the my kids' mum during that time. Then I come back and I box. Who was that first fight again? The first one back. The first one back was Tassif Khan. Tassif Khan, do you know? When I boxed Tassif against Yanko Yenev. When I boxed Tassif Khan, mate, it was the same night Chris Riley boxed Anthony Crawler. Does I remember right? Uh, it was the day before weighing, and Tassif Khan weighed eight pounds heavier than me the day before. So how much did he weigh? Like, on the night of the fight and on that night of the fight we, me and Tassif were a floater on Sky and which you know what a floater means you could be on like any t- second so you have to be gloved off on the first Sky fight has gone on live don't you they come yeah, the whenever room. you fit yeah, the gap pretty, basically don't you yeah yeah, pretty much yeah so it was our fight that was doing that Um, they come to the change room saying this fight doesn't look like it's going, going to go distance around about 9 o'clock get gloved off Francis you're on next so I was gloved up on the pad ready to go so what time they come and got me half 12 at night I was falling asleep in the change rooms I was literally falling asleep I was having... at nine. <laughs> yeah I was gloved up from nine o'clock to come got me at half 12 
Mate, I, was, I was falling asleep. I kept getting up, no, walking to the bathroom in the change rooms because we had some the toilets and that in the same change rooms. Filling the sink up of cold water and put my head in it to keep me awake. I kept saying to myself, another 10 minutes, I'm taking my gloves not going on, fuck it. Like, but you needed the money, so I ended up fighting. Yeah, well, this is it, man. Um, this is it. Then after Tessa Kana, we had that home fight. I'm the only home one, the other career. This is why I said to myself, I know... If you ask Carl Greaves, he'll tell you. If I was a ticket seller, I'd win titles. Like he, he says he had a career of winning titles. Yeah, Carl's a lovely guy. Love Carl. He's a, he's a top. He's a top manager, mate. It's a top man. Top another, sport. Another top. guy training, promoting. He's killing it, Carl. He's for me. He's like the standards to what you need. What to be doing? He's going to work. I look at Carl Greaves. If you can out work Carl Greaves, you're going to do well. What career? He's a hell of a fighter, honey. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's got a lot of knockouts, but. He's got a lot of knockouts on highlight reels, hasn't he? That left up was lethal. Oh, yeah. he's, a, but he's a top man, mate. He used to tell you as it was, Carl. He, he paid for my um my license a few times and just took a bit out of my face slowly over the course of fights. Not many managers to do that. But he's he's a good, good man, Carl, mate. I've got nothing but good words for him. Then I boxed, I had my own fight, obviously, against where I knocked a lad out and uh, I think it was 60 seconds, wasn't it? Yeah, Yanko, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know for a fact if I was a ticket seller and I was fighting these journeymen every that's what I would have been doing. I'd have been putting them weight like early. That's why I say when these home fighters are only taking these journeymen in the distance, you're not you're not doing out your career. Do you know what I mean? You've, you've got go, to be you, getting you've had someone ask you a question. He's per ask Francis what fight he'd like if he was to return to the ring and why. He looks ready to roll. I'll I'll happily fight again tomorrow. I would come who, back with the five Francis. Who, if, if looking at the current crop, who who was a, who it was a top ten in the flyweights now. It was a top ten in the flyweights now. Bleeding neck. You probably know more than me, mate. I'm not too sure without looking. I know Sonny Edges is the king of the division, isn't he? but he's world level. So it was like domestic level. I know there's Craig Dabs here. There's um. A fr- Oh, it's the British champion, is it Thomas Frank or something like that? To be fair, uh, yeah, Tommy Frank, in it at the moment. Oh, I think. Tommy Frank. Well, Big Dabs, you should be British down, Commonwealth champion for me. To be fair, it, though, I think what what the answer, uh, Jamal, basically, what the answer I'd anyone is, is anyone. <laughs> I'd, anyone in, I'd want a big name, do you know what I mean? I'd want a good name, someone who's going to scare me. I'd want to, like, assume what I think it could potentially stop me to, to make me want to train hard. But if the British border won't let me come back, I'd come back tomorrow. Um, if you look at the fights that I've had, and I've never been knocked out. Do you know what I mean? I got, I know I got put down once against who won the British title. Who was the European champion recently? He was uh, oh, what's his name? He's just been, he, he got knocked out at world level and he just won the title recently again. Here you go, Jamal. I'll take him against many of them, bar Sonny. I think against Tommy Frank would be a cracker. He could still have a row. I think I, I think me and Tommy really frank would have a good fight. Like Sonny Sonny Edwards are not gonna lie, he'd box my lugs off. Do you know what I mean? I'd be shadow boxing for twelve rounds. I don't think anyone in the world beat him. I honestly yeah, don't. Yeah. I think I think he beats Bam Rodriguez a lot of them. He's too awkward, too good, too he's just, he's, Yeah. He's he's a classic he's hit, elite. hit fighter. And there's he's not elite level, mate. Yeah, mentally he's, he's mentally bad. elite as well. And that's the difference between the world that's the difference between uh, world class and elite for me, Ment- the mentality. Do you know what I mean? He's elite. I think he beats a lot of them. I honestly do. But I wouldn't... Well, I'd, I'd, where, I'd, where were I'd, we, should we say? Where were we? But do you know what? Really probably the best for the fans to watch. Probably me and Craig Dabbs. It would be a crap fight to watch between the fans. Yeah, Andrew would. Because Craig Dabbs is all acting and he's fit as a fellow. Yeah, there you go. 100%. Sonny is the yeah. best the division for Sonny sure. is. Sonny is a king division, mate. He beats Martinez a lot of them. They're avoiding him. Do you know what I mean? It's not him avoiding them. They don't want him because I know even if you do beat him, you're going to look horrible against him. He's hard yeah. work. You're not going to look good against Sonny. Well, well uh, here we are. Where where were we with you? Um, Kevin Satchel, and then in 2011, January, Martin Power in February, Paul Butler, April, Chris Hoy in November, the 1st of November, and then you had Usman Ahmed on the 11th of November. Um, I, put him down, I put him down that room, I not I dropped him in that rematch. I won. I, I beat Usman twice, mate. Kevin Satchel, the first fight was the, the fight I enjoyed the most up in full career. 
it was a real I got we got fight the night for it. Um I believe it could have went either way that one. He won the rematch. But what I can say about even though he did win the rematch fair and square, he is a better fight than me, Satchel, do you know what I mean? He would have won world level if he carried on. Um what I can say is I did against uh, Jamie Codlin and Ireland on the Patrick Father fight, I disagreed and uh, I tore my rotor cuff and I'd only just come back for, from a rotor cuff injury against the second fight against Satchel. But I'd believe he'd have beat me anyway because he made the adjustments I never. Uh, yeah. That was the fair one, the one I enjoyed the most in my career. It was a cracking fight and I thought I could have nicked it beyond you. Yeah. And he's a hell of a fighter, really, as Kevin Satchel. Chris I, you, beat me. I don't think you give yourself credit, to be fair, mate. Some of these, some of these fights that you, the turnaround, like December was probably, um, sorry, 2012 was probably your quietest year. Um, you had Phil, Phil Smith. Uh, I wasn't even training for the likes of Phil Smith, uh, Ian also, and them fights. I wasn't even training for them. I was just turning up and fighting because I had lot. My heart had gone mad because of not my heart, as my head. I was thinking like. I'm fighting all these tough fights, which I was, and I should have, I should have, I should have get, got a, like a few decisions. You know what I mean? And he's even one or two of them decisions against these good names changes your full career. You come to the point where I thought to myself, I'm fighting my ass off here. Like I'm giving the giving these kids hell where I could nick the fight and shit like that, and I'm not even getting around. What's the point of me trying? Do you know what I mean? What's the point of me going these hard runs and these hard diets and all this just to be like taught the fuck basically middle fingers taught the fuck off basically simple. And that's what was happening. So I wasn't even training for likes of them. Because if you then, if you look after my f- second half of my career, if you switch that round to my first half, agree the same them opponents, I reckon I'll knock them all out. I was going to say, if you look at two thousand, you had two fights in two thousand and thirteen, but two thousand and fourteen, you've had well one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen fights in two thousand and fourteen, and that was just because. My tw- I had twins at home, do you know what I mean? I had no job, I had twins at home, and that was my way of getting the money for them. I had to provide them. Then it was more about, because when I turned pro, I wanted to be a world champion. I said that, you know what I mean? I wanted to get to the top the quickest way possible, and that's fighting the best, basically. So yeah. no one could say I wasn't the best. But at that point, I just needed the money, mate, for my family at home. And well, to be fair, isn't isn't that what we do, mate? Is, isn't but that what we do? I kicked, you know? I kicked myself at home because I think, I think like, if I was a ticket sell my life, could have been so different, you know what I mean? I could have been one of these fighters everyone's talked about in the sky, and I was, it was like, even millions of world titles. Because I, I know I, was, I had the chin, I had the art, I, I, can hit, I was probably one of the biggest punches in the division, if not the biggest. That, that's why every one of the fighters, even all these prospects who come out when win world titles and stuff like that, he used to come out flying at me for the first 20 seconds. As soon as I clipped him back once or twice, that was it. They're on the bike for the rest of the fight. Do you know what I mean? There was only Charlie Oy and Anthony Nelson, who was later, but this is obviously later in my career as well, who stayed and fought for me for the full fight. But I think, because when I boxed Anthony Nelson, I recently split up with one of my coaches and gone, gone, like, gone with someone else. And he was a good mate of Mal Gates, who was Nelson's coach. I believe he... I'm not saying it could be a good coach from Mal, do you know what I mean? I'm not taking any way think away from their tactics, but no one had jumped on me like Nelson did. He always used to come out and then, like try and basically fight on distance. Nelson come out, jumped on me and didn't let me go for six rounds. Like he it felt to me like that was an inside the like, information tactic, do you know what I mean? Because I'm a slow starter. I after one or two rounds of warm in the fight and I'd get more because uh, yeah. I remember when I when I boxed Charlie Oy as well, he pretty much did the same, but he could he probably got the tactic from Nelson watching that fight. Um, and I, I can remember even his dad shouting in the face, don't let this little prick enter the face, because no one's going to the fight. It's, it's a different fight, you know what I mean? But yeah, they're the only two recent, really, and Browning, who was, who was stood and had a fight with me, really. Well, obviously, yeah, King yeah. Farrell early on, but, but King, I was very inexperienced. Jamal has said, ask Francis if he could go back to 2014 for his debut against Jordan Turner. What would he do differently in the fight? And would he go for the knockout? Against John Taylor, I could go back because I remember that fight. He was a good, tough kid. I, mean, I think it was his debut. Um, yeah. he, he was a lot tougher than people expect him. Well, I'll give him credit for that kid. I don't know what he did in his career after that, but I'd have, I'd have took the fight season train probably before it. And I'd, I'd, Turner, I'd have... He had 11 fights, 
three wins, seven losses, one draw. He should have won more than that, mate, because he had more talent than that record suggests there. But if I'd have put the fight series and I'd have fought him the same way as I fought like Sasha on that, and I think I could would probably would have stopped him. But it's too late, and it's like too many ifs and buts. But most of my career trained myself. I didn't know I only sparred really for the first two or three fights, really. I was sparring um Jason Booth and that. He used to come down spars down the Welton gym. But after that, mate, he used to just really hit the pads into the bag and hit the road. Do you know what I mean? It's more about, for me, more about making the weight because then I knew I was getting paid. So what I know really. Say is you're an absolute credit, mate, to to your twins. I'll tell you yeah. now, because to have Thank someone, you. to have a dad like you that gave his all and, and tried his best, that's all you can In ask, mate. It's this town as well, where you're from, no one's supposed to be in this town, do you know what I mean? The drive to your father and follow you, where I believe it was from Manchester, I'd have had that phone and I'd have had a different career. Where in this town, mate, they'd only follow you once you got your title. Once you get, once you make something, then they'll follow you and tell to be your best mate. Until then, you're on your own, basically, do you know what I mean? And when you slip up, and when you slip up, they can point the finger and say, look, ah, so they feel like they're doing better for themselves. That's what Miller's was like. It's, it's a glory hunting town. So it's a lot of it's about where you're from as well, isn't it? It is, mate. It is. And, and you know, it's about the support, the right people around you. Well, I, 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 was, right I, was, I was trying to relocate a few times to go and live near Kieran Fowles. So I could like, train with him while he could get a British licence. But it's obviously it's expensive, isn't it, moving by yourself and stuff like that. Then it's, it's not a cheap thing to do by yourself. But if I could come back to the bottom now, obviously I would. But it's a British law board that won't give me thanks for my licence, which I don't know why. Because like you say, I'm still healthy, do you know what I mean? I'm still fresh. I never got hurt in any of my fights, really. So I don't know what's it, why they are such a problem. I mean, they, they, when they were call me, they were saying stuff like, um, you're not getting around. Well, that's not my problem. It's, not you. it's, it's boxing's politics, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? The refs are paid off. They know what to do. It's not my fault. They're not actually going to give me a round. Do you know what I mean? Give me the rounds and when because I'm winning them. People in the crowd know I'm winning the rounds. So I'm just not getting them. So you can't use that against me. I'm not getting knocked out. I'm not getting hurt. Like, so what's your problem? There's just there's the problem, mate. And Carl Grease had me to be honest here. The North East Board's the strictest, the strictest in the country. So it's them that stopped me from coming out of boxing because it kills me now. I want to fight all arm now. That's why I, I don't really take. I, I still love boxing. I talk about it all day long. And I watch the shows, but I know, mainly watch the 50 50 fight, knowing it's a big fight because I know when you watch these undercards, they're all fixed. Like the whole fight is guaranteed to get the win. It's just that simple. We, there's a saying in the way, just a room when you've probably heard it, you have to knock them off for a draw. Do you know what I mean? And it's that's not a lie, that's true. But it's boxing's corrupt, mate. It, it is corrupt. It needs it needs fresh blood from top to bottom of the judges, the positive and everything. This needs wiping out and putting fresh blood and people who are just there for the sport, do you know what I mean? We like boxing for me it come the greatest spot in the world by being fifteen rounds, one world title. Go well, back to that if that's what it takes. Then you can't have these fighters fighting each other. It should be about the pop reality. It should be about who's the best talent in the ring. That's all it should be about. Yeah, yeah. That's what you should be about, but it's not now. Now it's about if you sell the most tickets, you're the best, aren't you? Well, yeah. Go, go back, you go back to the 50s, mate. Would Jake Paul go, go in any boxing ring? Would he be allowed? <laughs> would anyone would anyone yeah. acknowledge there? This, Do you this, know what I mean? This is it, mate. This is it. It's, it's now it's about pop reality in social media. If you can be popular in social media, you'll go far. Look at the lad from the North East, Tommy Ward. He's got well titled title talent. But how many people have heard him? Because he's not a massive ticket sales, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. That's, that's not right, because his talent deserves more credit and more publicity. But he's not going to get it because he doesn't have the tickets to sell. And that's where box is. It's the old saying as well, isn't it? It's not what you know. It's who, it's you, who know, you know. It's who you know. Exactly, it's, mate. It's how many feet you have behind you, in not it? Yeah, yeah. You, do you know what I mean? When you're in from town to Millsbury, they only follow you if you got the money or you somebody. They won't follow you anyway up and spot you. Little Manchester, the proper boxing places, aren't they? They'll follow the fighters, not on them. They'll follow the fighters, you know what I mean? Win, lose, or draw. They'll follow the fighters, the proper sports. Millsbury fans, the North East fans, they are proper boxing fans. They'll follow you if you're doing well, not to. Yeah. So, what are you doing these days in France? Is what are you, what are you I'm up doing to? support work. I do support okay, work. Cool. Right? Um, look after use of autism and challenging behavior. I wish I could go back to boxing, to be honest, it doesn't be really but I don't even train anymore. This can't be asked. If he had a, a new weapon fight again, I'd start training. 
But when you're in the gym for nothing, when you're yeah. boxing till late, do you know what I mean? To be my life. For the head four, it's difficult, isn't it? It's it's important. It's hard, mate. It's, it's hard to find the motivation. I need a fight. Like, do you know what I mean? I need, no, I could have a fight any minute, or I'm back in the game. Well, because coming back wouldn't be a problem, and getting the motivation and training a fight again wouldn't be a problem. And I know, even all these tough kids in the tough game, I'd give them all like hard nights work stuff. So I know I would. But the boards, it's a politics that won't let me back. I've been like being debating and talking about going at, um. What's the, the other license with the British Bar? Don't where is it? I can't stand. Um, it, is it what's it, the other one? Is it uh, international boxing? The Irish boxing one or something like what's it called? Yeah, you've got, you've got the there's Bieber, Bieber, that's the one. I've been, I've been taught, I've been, I've actually been taught the chairman of that and one of the courses and that about like getting a license and that. But my dreams always been with a British license, really. Like, I'm the winning the British title or world title. And it, and it's a big, but obviously it's, it's still a massive organisation, and the, the professional fights are getting more credit. It's I don't know when you've had your set and one, it's hard uh, to get motivated from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, don't know, I totally get it, mate. But do you know what? Oh, what an amazing thing you're doing now, because I tell you, I I did care work for ten years, it's and stressful, um, isn't it? and it's to give back and to look after people and and to do. Oh, what the we well, that's why I'm not, not everyone can do it, Francis. So you've obviously the, got a good heart, mate. The people who don't have a voice, aren't they? they can't stand. Do you know what I mean? They need to help. So I felt like a, a lot of the kids, I didn't have a voice. So I don't know. I can relate to them a lot easier. But it is a stressful job. I, I prefer to do on boxing, obviously, but it is what it is, mate. And it's need to do on somewhere. Well, all I will say, mate, is it's an absolute pleasure to have a chat with you, Francis. You're... It's been a pleasure, mate. I, honestly, I, felt, I was buzzing when you messaged me, asking me. I, I felt privileged, to be honest. So I just see myself as a normal person, do you know what I mean, which I am. Which all, any fighters for me, even like the Titan Fury, anyone. They're just normal people like me or you who's had a bit more success in the game. That's, that's the difference. Yeah, no yeah. different, mate. It's all normal people. So, yeah, I felt privileged when you asked me. So I do appreciate it. Any time you want me back, I'll come on. Oh, honestly, mate, I am chuffed to have you on. And it's, you know, as I say, your your twins will be proud. And um, like I will say, the the people that you support, they're, they're blessed to have you, mate. Honestly, you've got a good heart. You're a top bloke. And I, I, I appreciate your time. So thank you very much. I appreciate that, mate. Nothing but respect in return. Um, you have to send me the link to when this goes on, mate.